Are you a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy? Well, join me today as we print Star-Lord's face mask. See you guys inside. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. As I said, we are looking at Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, specifically Quill's mask from, well, Guardians of the Galaxy. So today, it's one of those things we're zeroing in and getting closer to right now as I'm making this video, we're, get, we're a couple months away from Halloween. And with that means costumes. But do you really need Halloween to have this costume or have this face mask on your shelf? No, not really. But kids' costumes are coming up, different things like that. And it's kind of one of those things you got to really kind of plan ahead before the time hits because these take time to print. Um, this print took about four days, the one that I did. This is the second iteration because the first, when I printed it at 100%, it was too small to really go back on my face, but it fit my daughter perfectly, which was great. So I painted it and sent it home. You'll see some, um, if you've seen my Instagram or anything like that, which if you're not, go follow me over there. You see all kinds of stuff every day because I post daily over there. Um, I painted it up, did the eyes, and sent it home with her. So it's kind of one of those things. This is also kind of a cool thing, but it's also a cool thing to put on the shelf, like I have behind me here. You know, Captain America Shield, which is a project still in progress. A lot of projects still in progress, unfortunately. But this is what we're going for today. So it looks kind of small, but it's not really. So from the original model, I printed this at 125%. And it slides on and it looks, it fits nicely. So today we're gonna slice this, we're gonna get it back on the printer and we're gonna get this guy printed. I did use Inland PLA Plus to print this, specifically the white. Um, I like the white because when I'm printing, it shows up really well. Um, that and just adding darker colors onto it, it works really easy because a lot of times I'll prime into black then I'll come back with a white for shadowing and then I'll come back with the metallic colors and I'm kind of curious on this one I've ordered some graphite powder I've never tried this before but I'm gonna get some black glossy paint and I'm actually gonna go in here go finish this probably with a uh, with graphite powder to try to give it a real nice metallic look I'm really kind of curious to see how that goes so to see that finished product if you want me to do a video on it you guys gotta tell me down below but also Keep track of my Instagram because you'll probably see it over there. Now to do the eyes, well, these little gels. These are very cheap. They're on, inst you can get them on Amazon in packs of like four or five. You can put them in front of lights and change the light color, but they also work really well to do the eyes. They keep some see-through, but it gives them the color. And they're really easy to stick in there and glue in. So definitely a good recommendation. I'll put a link down below so you can get whatever color you want. Because if you saw Marvel's What If, which came out today, season two, where um, I can't think of his name, was actually Star-Lord and he had purple lenses. It was kind of neat. It was a different, because it was a multiverse thing. So let's get this thing sliced. Let's get this thing on the printer and let's get you guys to this final project. And if you like what you see on the channel or you're new here, hit that subscribe button, join the crew. We put out a new video every Friday of all kinds of different things, whether it's education-based, how-to videos, how to make cool things like this, and just to keep you guys 3D printing because that's the goal of the channel is. I know 3D printing is frustrating and I know it can be a real pain in the rear sometimes, but it's worth doing. It's a fun hobby because you can make whatever you want, basically. We're not really limited except for the size of the printer, and that's not even a limitation anymore with things like the new CR30, which if you're curious, go check out that video, where we have an endless Z. So if you want to print a big old sword, you print it. One piece. This was printed, this is actually, this model is actually in four pieces, which I'll show the time lapse as we slice them, because we've got the back piece of the head and there's a pipe that goes up in here to give this more dynamic look. So a lot of good detail. I'll try to get get some of that detail caught for you guys so you can see it a little bit better. But honestly, it's a great model. So let's head over to that computer and let's get this thing sliced. All right, guys. So here's the file on Thingiverse that we went after for this project. This is by Happy Moon. Um, it was loaded back in 2019. And I got to say, fantastic detail on this file i really like this one a lot they did a he did a, they did a very good job in the detail 
they pre-separated some of the pieces so that we can get better detail and create a better fit. Now, when I printed this one at 100% when I loaded in the Cura, it didn't fit me. It was too narrow for my face. But my daughter, my 11-year-old, it was just right. So for me, I had to increase the size of this to 115% to be able to fit somewhat comfortably on my head and actually get it on my head. So there's four files because the detailing part, I love that the back piece has been separated and that these pipes have been separated. For and those pipes being separated is an important thing because that's going to give you a lot of good detail. So if you want to get this file printed, link to this exact file on Thingiverse is in the description below. So let's move over to Kira and let's look at the four files and let's get this sliced. So let's launch Kira. I've already got it up. I am running the latest version of Kira at 4.10. You can see I've got a Creality CR10 profile loaded. So one thing I want to do is if you have an Ender 3, you can do this at least at 100%. So I'm going to pull in the front and try to get a better view angle here. We're going to wait for that to load. There it goes. All right. So that's an Ender 3 build plate with it at 100%. So if you're printing this for your kid or, or someone, it's going to print really nice. But if you're printing like, you, whoops, I had custom support selected. Let's get rid of that. Custom, well, <laughs> edit undo. Let's grab that custom support and let's get that out of there. We don't want that in there. Delete selected. All right. So you guys can see this is a very nicely detailed model. A lot of good details here. Here, the piping, the respirator, the eyes are very well done. There's a lot of good on this model. Now, if you're going to do this on the Ender 3, and you want to bump it up. I don't know if you can bump it up to 115. Yeah, I didn't think you were going to be able to, and you're not going to be able to twist that to fit. So what you're going to need to do is go into Mesh Mixer and cut this one up. Do a plain, it's called a plain cut. Um, if you're curious, I've got videos out here on the channel that show you how to go do that and even put alignment pins so when you put it together, the pins will get it just right. And then if you use like a 3D printing pan or filler along the seam line, you can get rid of that seam line and actually make this look seamless. So that's one way to do this is just to break it in smaller pieces or do a plain cuts here on the side to cut that off and just move the mask back um, would be another way to do it. So, but I did this with a CR10. So the CR10 build plate is more than big enough. Did it switch? Yeah, it did. It's more than big enough to handle it at 115, 115%. One thing we want to make sure is we are fully up on our build plate. And when I printed it, I don't like this. See that huge gap? So I rotated it and I set the mask back a little bit. And we're gonna get the we're gonna get this guy zeroed out. And you're throwing a fit. Why are you throwing a fit? What's wrong? Let's go down and look at my raft settings real quick. Put the font. Oh, it's a 10. Meh. Five. We don't need 10. And as you can see, it is sitting a lot better on the build plate. We can even try to rotate that one more time to see if it will sit any better, and it won't. So, about as good as we can get. So, looking at this, you see there's a lot of unsupported lit um, areas on this model. And one of the things that I did not like when I auto-generated the support, if I went up to 60 or down to 60 or 50 percent, there's support everywhere, and it's just a little too much for my liking. So, one of the things I did is custom supports. And on these areas here, I supported them. Whoops. Well, we'll deal with that with those later. I came back and put in more support and try to get those red areas well supported, um, especially these corners, like that one right there. I wanted good support on the corners. So that'll help you in like right here. Sometimes it gets hard to see these corners. But like right here, this corner, that corner, I put in custom supports to make sure that those corners built up and they didn't sag during the print process, which can happen sometimes. And that also lets your raft kind of build together um, into one piece instead of multiple different little rafts. Because what I've seen in the other projects too is those little rafts or those little connection points, they move or get knocked off, where if it's all one piece, you're not going to lose it. So that's the size that I print at 115. You can see 
it does take up considerable amount of the build plate, but luckily there's still enough room to bring in the pipes. And you got to remember, if you adjusted one piece, you got to adjust them all. So we got to bring our size up, one five, and it's going to throw a fit about it, one five. So we got to scoot those over or do the mistake I just did, fix that. And we got to go back to the move and we got to scoot these over. So our mask is not mad at us and we'll actually sit on the build plate. Yeah, get out of my way. I want the helmet on there. Zero. Come on. And zero. Okay. So now what I can do is bring the pipes back in so they're not touching that grayed out area. And there we go. So now you got your pipes at the right size. So I did this in one print, which you guys will see in the time lapse. I made it all in one piece. It's all printed on there one time. And then we got the back place to deal with. So I'm going to clear the build plate. I did this one in a separate print and it's the helmet up the, basically it's the back that connects on. You guys can see that is kind of a strange one. So I came back with the custom supports again to get good supports. I did increase my raft size a little bit so the supports all connected together. You guys will see that in the video. Some people get on the comments and get mad at me about, oh, you're being so wasteful of material. I would rather support it in the places instead of lose an entire print because of one stupid fail. So sometimes, sometimes you're right. I do over support. I will fully give everybody that, but I get my print. And that's what matters. Now, sometimes too, over supporting can be an utter nightmare. Don't get me wrong. Um, and it's also how you place your model, like placing it this way. You see, there's a lot there that's not supported. Um, it's one of those things that's important to go through and try different rotations. Like for example, that one, does this fit better? But look at all that. That's going to do a huge buildup. And what am I, what's my auto generate? My auto generates at 70%. That's going to build up a huge centerpiece. That ain't going to work. That's that's just not good. So you got to kind of angle this around. And you guys will probably see my orientation. I don't. So one thing I try try very hard to do is this outer surface. I want it as pristine as I possibly can. So I actually try to keep supports off the part you're going to see. If you guys watch the Mandalorian video, a lot of people left comments of flip it over. But then all that support is touching the outside of the helmet. And I've got to spend a lot more time cleaning it up, sanding, filling, where I may use a little bit more support and I don't have to do that. So you got to really kind of think through your models through as you do this to make sure that you're not having that problem. So kind of just keep that in mind as you're going through this process. And of course, you know, there's these areas here um, like this one. I came back with some custom supports, um, especially the corners, like right there. I want those corners to build. So I'm putting on a custom support to make sure they're supported and they build properly. And this one was kind of difficult because you it's an arch back here. So I may, curves can make it harder, but even like this one right here, I want that supported. I want that corner to build up properly. And the cool thing about these custom supports is they come off really easy. Um, compared to the auto generator supports. So I'm very much like the, the custom supports. I used, I think I used a full spool to print this one. Um, and when you're doing it, make sure you check your, your infill. You want a little bit, like this set at 20%, go with five. That's probably enough that you get a good layer, good walls, um, and you get that strength that you need. So it's kind of, you just got to make sure you're getting what's best for yours. Like mine is really strong. Mine's going to take a hit and not break. So if it falls off my face and falls on the ground, it may get scratched, but it's not going to shatter. And I see that happen a lot of times. People put no infill and then they wonder why it's brittle. Um, you can fix some of that by upping your wall count. Um, like mine's at three, but just kind of keep that in mind that that's going to happen. If your wall count's too thin and you don't have infill in it, and it, it's gonna have flex, and that's not good. So kind of keep that in mind as you go through your projects. So that's me slicing it all together. 
Let's get this thing over to the printer and I will see you guys on the other side. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed the video while we made this. Now like I said too, ooh, the pipes that will go on here, you know this was additional pieces that we had to print. If I grab the right side, they slip in here and give just a little bit more detailed effect. I'll probably adhere these on with the 3D printing pin so that they stay on there and give that additional effect and then the back piece that will go into the head. So I'm probably, what I'll do is I'll probably put some foaming in here to help make it more comfortable to sit on the face and hold on to me. And there we go. A cheap leather jacket from uh, somewhere, red leather jacket and some black pants and boom, some old style headphones and you've got yourself a Star-Lord outfit. So, and if you're curious and you guys want me to, leave it down in a comment below if you want me to print Star-Lord's two uh, guns. So, Thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you're new here or if you just want to see more of random 3D printing stuff. I appreciate you guys. If you got any questions, comments down below. We'll see you in the next video.